Okay, welcome back to episode two of The Source. We have our second guest, Mr. Garrett Gunn, here in the flesh. Hello. Garrett Gunn. I am, I am the one they call Garrett of Gunn. So we've already talked a little bit about Garrett this episode. Uh, in Martha's interview, we talked a bit about his upcoming kids book, Spiro, um, which we're super excited about, but that's not why we have you on today. Uh, we are going to talk about probably one of the biggest projects of 2023 in comics period curse yeah. of cleaver county yes so yeah uh so we're gonna go like the total opposite yes the kids book that's right yeah. got it yeah. no that makes sense yeah uh so hard pivot <laughs> um so horror fans uh curse of cleaver county is a, it is an ongoing comic book series that is coming out this year and it is a big sandbox of horror villains each one being established in their own uh, shared universe and their own story arcs and uh, this first arc is written by Garrett Cohn. It is indeed. And yeah. what um, if you had to try to boil down the concept of Curse Cleaver County as a whole first and then your first story arc how would you do that? So what's cool about Cleaver County is that like I've and we mentioned this when we first talked about the series like I've never written horror um, in fact, like most of my life, I was never a horror fan. Like I was, <laughs> was not into it. Um, and just recently, like in the last four or five years, I've gotten super into horror films and, and reading horror comics and a bunch of stuff. And so I had started building this idea of like, I want to try to tackle this challenge. I want to do this horror thing. But like, I work with the guy who is like the horror guy. <laughs> and I was like, all right, well, I'm not. Yeah. Fuck that. I'm, oh, am I allowed to christen this? You are now. That's our first one. <laughs> I mean, you had to know that that was going to happen on me. You know? Yeah, yeah. Uh, so I was like, oh, Sorry, of course I've got to have. Yeah. Buy my kids book. <laughs> I've only say bad words in the comics. <laughs> um, so it seemed like a no brainer to be like, hey, Josh, let's let's make a horror universe. Um, so it's it's really cool. I I love. I love in certain, one of the things I like about like, you know, the terrible horror movies that I'm obsessed with is I love when they do crossovers. It's the best thing. Like yes. Freddy versus Jason is like just the most awful movie, but it's so great. It's so fun. It's so, so, and that's what I love. Like I, I was telling somebody yesterday, I was like, I actually don't even like movies that are actually scary. <laughs> like I like movies that are supposed to be scary. And so like. That idea of like this totally different villain and then this totally different villain like meeting and like th being this whole thing is really entertaining and funny and like meta and ridiculous. So I was like, well, let's do that. Let's make like six or seven of them that are all living in this area that have sort of like crossed paths multiple times and like, you know, span across time and space that like, like sp space geographically <laughs> or maybe space. Oh, shit. We haven't done that yet. <laughs> <laughs> Just, Anything could happen. Well, got to change stuff now. Um, yeah, so it was awesome to think of like, let's build this thing where Josh can write for characters and I can write characters and other people can write characters and they can all sort of exist in this universe uh, that all just sort of lives under this bubble that we've made. Um, the fun so, part yeah. about that is that there's, uh, in Cleaver County, we have, we have a big map uh, it's yeah. a really, really cool map, yeah. and uh, it shows how secluded this entire county is. It's kind of, it's like a place of no return, in a sense. There's, yep. It's its own little economy. It's got its own history, yep. and each city and town in the county has its own dark pasts. Yeah. So it's easy to have multiple writers writing in the same world because they can pick a town. But where the fun comes in is all the collaboration, I think. Whoops, yeah. We have to kind of keep track of, like, well... Who works where? What are the family lines? <laughs> yeah. uh, what's been happening over the past hundred years? Yep. You know, you have you have newspapers that cross over. You have uh, characters that cross over. You have locations that cross over. Um, so we're all kind of trying to do this simultaneously without stepping on each other's toes. And I think that is actually my favorite part of us. It's so fun. Yeah, yeah and it's it's funny because like usually when I'm doing it, like because all my other books exist in a shared universe. So like when I mess something up. I'm like, well, I'll just I'll change that history a little bit right, to make right. that fit. But now it's like I'm coming into your office to be like, okay, so I got to like make this work and this guy's got to be here. But like your guy is there. So like how do we make sure that this like it's awesome. 
And like as the database and like all this gonna get crazy. <laughs> get we're insane. insane. Yeah. We're gonna have a whole room dedicated to Curse Cleaver County. We're trying to keep track of where yeah. everybody is. And <laughs> it's gonna be awesome. It's so fun. Um so for those this news has dropped already, but for those who haven't heard it, you're gonna hear it right here and right now in the source. There is already a movie deal. Um, so this has been optioned for a film by Skiba Vision. And as you saw from the news segment on today's show, uh, Skiba Vision has a movie coming out based on one of our other titles uh, this year through Lionsgate, uh, Dead Man's Hand. So that same team that worked on Rotten Tail and worked on Dead Man's Hand will be bringing Curse of Cleaver County yep. to life on the big screen. Uh, we don't have, uh, other than that announcement, we don't have any more news for you that we can talk about movie related. <laughs> but it's, uh, you can see the potential for sequels. You can see the potential for building out and fleshing out a yep. world where these characters can battle each other. And I'm just... Well, that was one of the things that, like, Brian, when he optioned it, put, like, loved about it so much is that he was like, this is cool, I can... You know, Brian was like, I, I've never really made, like, a slasher movie. And so he was like, and this is cool because we can make one and then we can make another one, and we can. And it can always be a new killer, a new story, a new yeah, time, and like this, fresh like film. Everything will feel fresh, but be tied together. In one world. Yeah, it's going to be awesome. I'm so excited. So right yeah. now, issue one is available to pre-order right in now. comic book yeah. shops, yep. and that means it is coming out. It comes in out March? in shops, yeah, March uh, 27th, I think? Second to last Wednesday. Oh, yeah, last. second yeah. to last, yeah, um, 21st. Uh, but yeah, it's it's amazing. So the first the first story arc, like Josh said, is one that I'm writing. Um, it follows a town called Port Harlow, which is sort of like a Maine esque sort of shipping sea town. Um, and the killer there, the urban legend, is called the Hooked Horror of Harlow, and he was an 1800s uh, longshoreman uh, who <laughs> fell in love with the governor's daughter and uh, was subsequently killed for it. Um, so now he comes to shore in Port, Port Harlow trying to get revenge on, you know, the family that had him killed. Um, it's, it's awesome. It's amazing. <laughs> yeah. I, I, yeah, it's turning out better than I expected to, because as I wrote it, I was like really nervous and I was like, ow, oh, I don't know. I've never done this. And I'm like, along the way, I'm like asking all these people I know who are big horror fanatics, like, will you please just read this? I, I just need to know if it's like too much, if it's not enough, if it's this. Luckily it passed most of the checks, so. And on top of that, we're the Good Boy team is returning for this. So we have yeah. we have Dave Lentz doing lettering, and we have we have Kit Wallace doing all the yep. pencils, inks, and colors. Yep. And while they're known for this very energetic style that has you know it's so dynamic and so you know fun and over the top, taking that and applying it to the horror genre <laughs> yeah. is so interesting. Especially watching Kit. So Kit's, how would you describe Kit's work, Martha? <sighs> Perfect. <laughs> Perfect for uh, me. As someone who loves color and absurdity and just... Yeah. His palettes are really fun. Yeah. Yep. Are uh, fun. His style is... Um, it's almost manga-esque in i would say level of detail at times but and it has that brings that energy but it's not it's not manga style it's psycho it's energy time. it's like all it for is. sure yeah, yeah. and then <laughs> yeah. what he we what's really fun is he's experimenting with curse of cleaver county he knows it's yeah. a different genre so he's really kind of trying out some new things uh and so he's yeah. altering his style yeah. a little bit and doing a lot more uh hatching and line work and yeah. it's crazy well he likes that kind of stuff like he he loves anything he can draw that is different than the last thing he drew. And like, what I like, what I feel like is so perfect about Kit on this is that the, the type of horror thing I was going for was like a scream vibe, like a very stupid, you know, like adolescent slasher. And like, it, it, it's just, his style is so like funny, even when it's serious. Yes. And then yeah. it's like serious when it's funny. So like, it's just, it's just chaos. You apply that to it's the chaos. gore and yeah. the kills. Yeah. yeah, and he does things constantly that I don't even like. Like, like I didn't script or like I didn't. I don't even notice until later. Like he did a whole scene in the first issue where like the killer's like in the background. All you can see is just his little circle eyes, and like that's it. And like the first three times I read through it, I didn't notice at all. And then someone else pointed it out, and I was like, oh my god. And now it's like a whole different thing. Now I'm like, wow, he's just chilling there. I it's am amazing. thrilled. Um, yeah. So the first story arc, which um, mm -hmm. you talked a little bit about, yep. about Port Harlow yep. and Shank. Yep. 
So that's going to be five issues long. Yep. And that is going to then issue six will kick off a new story arc, which yep. is one that I'm writing that takes place in a different spot yeah. in, uh, in Cleaver County. But you're going to start seeing a lot of, as it progresses, a lot of these storylines are going to start to bleed together. Yep. The things that you saw <laughs> early on are going to start to make more sense, or you're going to get these aha moments. Uh, and we're, we're, we're dropping Easter eggs for things that are multi arcs, like oh, multiple arcs down the road. Like, yeah, just because we're like, okay, let's. What can we tease now that in a year is yep. going to show up, or there like two years? In you know, like for sure. yeah, people will notice, and then we'll be like, oh yeah, we forgot we put that in there. <laughs> It'll be awesome. It's a huge yeah. endeavor. Um, yep. We're working on some really cool and unique marketing uh, that we're going to be doing throughout the year. You're going to be hearing so much more about this. Yeah. The cool thing is, right now, uh, so one, obviously, we're urging everyone to go to their local comic book store and let them know that you yep. want this carried so that you could pick it up. We expect this to fly off the shelves. Um, but there already is a one-shot comic book that you can get right now called Curse of Cleaver County Double Feature. And that has the origin stories of the two killers that are in the first two story arcs. So you'll get a story about uh, Shank and you'll get a story about the Diary of the Devil and it's kind of your yep. first introduction to this world. And that, we have this really cool variant cover, limited edition on our web store right now. Yeah. If somebody's looking to snatch one up, um, you can get it autographed by both myself and Garrett with a certificate of authenticity. It's up uh, at sourcepointpress.com. If somebody's curious, you're a horror fan, and you want to have a, a collectible early on before, you know, from the beginning, the first appearance of Shank, yep. the first appearance yep. of Direble Devil, and you'll be getting it before, you know, this thing turns into blockbuster film. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So yeah, head there, grab it. I'm super excited. What else can you tell everybody about what you've got on your plate right now for writing? Because there's so <laughs> many projects. Oh my God. Um, so many things. Uh, so we just started working on uh, the next iteration of Good Boy, uh, which will be coming out this fall or soliciting this fall for like a very early 24 release. Um, considered volume. Volume four, yeah. Which is by far the furthest I've made it. And it's exciting. <laughs> it is very odd. Like the omnibus is coming out and like, we just kind of sat back and we're like, this is crazy. Like we've done like 15 issues of this. Like this People is, are ready for more. They yeah, want more. It's, it's awesome. I, I love it. I'll write Good Boy as long as people will buy it. Um, so we got Good Boy Volume 4 coming out. Uh, we've got, I have an arc of Cleaver County after Josh's, uh, which is called Jabberjaw, and it's uh, Swap Monsters. Um, on top of that, I've got some stuff that probably shouldn't be on this YouTube channel because it's wildly inappropriate. Um, and then we've also got uh, a series coming out uh, in summer called We Eat Gods. Uh, the first issue was on Kickstarter. Uh, like six months ago, uh, but it's going to be a four issue mini series and it's Wally meets Terminators. Look at that type of thing. Yeah, that's why. Yeah. 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 Yep. Another, another awesome young yeah. adult title on top of Spiro, Spiro. which yeah. we are doing together. We're pumping them out. Yes. <laughs> and yes. you will be at, in March, <laughs> you will be at both C2E2 oh, yeah. and Megacon in yes. Orlando. The same weekend. Yes. So he's going to fly back and forth. We're talking <laughs> Orlando, Florida, and Chicago, yeah. Illinois. Yeah, so I made I did this dumb thing where I've like promised multiple people that I would be at cons to do signings, and then I was like, oh, they're the same weekend. So now I'm Thursday, Friday at MegaCon and Friday or Saturday, Sunday at C2E2. The exciting thing is gonna be fun. Both of those conventions have uh, exclusive yeah. uh, items that you can only get at those shows. Yeah. Um, it's going to be like highly sought after collectibles, and there's going to be some really, really cool stuff going on at both of the booths, yeah. uh, the Source Point Press booth at both conventions. Yeah. And you will get to hold the Heartbreaker from yes. Spiro yourself and get a photo yes. with it. How yeah. tall do you think that thing is? It's five around? foot. Five foot. It's five foot, yeah. Um, it's a Martha Webby sized sword. <laughs> <laughs> it's most. Are you it's thinking most of Webby? It's uh, mostly Webby. I can be sword. in the back supporting the sword. Yeah, there you go. I won't be in the photo. We're actually gonna have. We're actually gonna have two of them there. One is to not be touched, and it's a display. And then we have a hefty, sturdy one for people to hold. Yep. Uh, but they're ridiculous. It's awesome. Something I think bad's gonna happen. Oh, 100 percent. No. Uh, <laughs> but, What's funny is like I had that sword made like when there was no plans for it. I was just like, this is so funny. I'm gonna like make a real life prop. 
and the guy who made it, I thought it was going to be a prop. And the guy sent me a picture and he was like, man, it took like 200 hours to print this. And I was like, what? And he sent me a picture of his girlfriend who's five foot holding it. And it was as tall as her. And he was like, well, you wanted it like to scale, right? <laughs> and I was like, I <laughs> what? Yeah, now I absolutely. This is like the opposite of the spinal tap thing. Yeah. <laughs> where, yeah. where they drew, he wrote yeah. inches instead of feet. And they had this really <laughs> tiny little display. Yes. It was, now it's, yeah. So then I was like, it's just been in my house for like the two years that we've worked on Spiro. And now I'm like, okay, well, we got to do something with How this. How many pieces? It had to be assembled. The first one was done uh, in like... 16 pieces um and the new one the guy who designed it who engineered it uh he was like i found a better way to do this that you can like just slide it together like piece it together so it's like the because the first one was like so complex and he had to like piece it together and like do all this stuff this one he's like all you have to do is just take the metal rods and slide the pieces on uh and it was like 30 something pieces oh wow like yeah. slion too yeah. doing the uh painting for it our resident yeah miniature expert yeah so, so she's she's gonna finish the whole thing because right now you can kind of see the pieces of like where it was printed and stuff so she's gonna like smooth it all out finish it paint it to match the book and the she's art and stuff she's a wizard so i'm so excited to see it yeah like everybody in this building is and i'm just like i have a thing can you make it pretty like book <laughs> and they all just do it it's amazing yeah so we got um yep Franklin and Ghost is going yes. back, yeah. and you're getting like yeah. a remaster, yeah. new cut. Oh my god, yeah, of it. So that's exciting. Yeah. People who didn't get already get in on Franklin and Ghost now is your chance to start from the very beginning of the story yep. and read it all the way through. Yeah, it's it's weird because like I mean I did Franklin and Ghost so long ago that like when we did it, we just did it as Kickstarter chunks, and like I forget all the time, like. I was always like, man, I always forget that we didn't never like put this out. Like it went to two hundred Kickstarter backers, right? Like it's every a campaign, lot of and who hasn't read it? it? And it's on my body, yeah. Uh, and so I was like, we need to like cut this up and distribute it. Um, so we did. We're doing a remastered version of number one, which was split into now one and two. Uh, and there's eight issues of it that are coming out. It's awesome. Kit Wallace is doing the cover art for it. I just saw the first one that's so good um and then uh we're gonna have tons of you know alternate covers um like you know ratios all kinds of stuff it's gonna be really cool and for those who don't know franklin and ghost has an yeah. animated series in development yep. starring sean Shemmel, who plays goku uh, he is playing franklin, franklin yep. the the lead role and then ghost is being played by academy award winner billy bob Thornton. <laughs> yeah which yeah. It feels insane to say. <laughs> yes. No big deal. Yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> so right now, if people wanted to see something about that, uh, they could find uh, an exclusive clip that IGN yeah. had IGN dropped. put out. Yeah, if you search IGN Franklin and Ghost, it's the, it's, yeah. you can find it there. That's it? Well, there's that, and then we released at New York Comic Con. Um, Comic Book Resources put out uh, a full trailer. Full trailer. It's like it's a three and a half minute trailer. With original music. Yeah, like by Shao Do. Yeah. It's like, so it's great. It's really dope. It's so good. It's really good. I listen yeah. to it every day. I know. <laughs> yes. It's awesome. Which is also a very like unreal thing yeah. uh, that we have like a musician who did original pieces of music, like original rap songs for wild yeah it's crazy i just try not to think about it <laughs> so get overwhelmed. yeah i get overwhelmed yeah 2023 is gonna be the year of the gun <laughs> no it's gonna be a good year yeah it's gonna be a good year i wouldn't it's say a lot gun, though i wouldn't all right is there anything is there any other books uh this year i'm sure talk about i i don't know we can't, talk about, we can't one. talk about i'm trying to think there's i'm sure there's so many. I mean, we have Ashcans that are coming out. We've got Swagjackers. Mm -hmm. We've got Roadies. Okay. We've got Bad Girl. So Bad Girl is going to be a part of Good Boy Volume 4. Um, Bad Girl is the tie-in to Good Boy. Um, and she's a cat. And you she, know what I was saying about cats earlier? What was she saying about cats? It's got a cat in it. you got to buy it. Oh, that's the rule. Yeah. Wow. That was less exciting than I thought it was going to be. <laughs> oh, <okay. laughs> I thought it was going to be like something inappropriate or that you're just like, no, just cats are great. <laughs> no, just buy them. has got cats. Just cats. She's the best. So, Curse of Cleaver County. Yes. Available pre-order now. Yes. Out in March. Yes. And there's the one shot you can pick up at sourcepointpress.com right now. It's yep. a web store exclusive. 
And where can people follow along with you all of the Gary Gunn adventures, all of the updates? You've been, you're really good at, at letting fans them. know what's going on along the way. Try. Uh, yeah, Better you can, than most. Yeah, I mean, <clears throat> oh, damn. Yeah. Papa, shot fire, bro. Uh, you can find me on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, everything at Some Writer Guy, because if you can't remember who wrote it, I don't know, Some Writer Guy. Some Writer Guy. Perfect. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you so much for joining yeah, us on The Source. I know. Thank you for having me. I